Oh, hey everyone, it's Emily, and today we are in a different location. We're in the bedroom where all my red books are because we're doing the mid year book freakout tag, and I wanted it to be easier to grab the books that I'm going to be referring to and put them away. I'm going to try to be pretty snappy with this and give editing Emily some grace. So, if there are some books I mentioned that I don't have physical copies of and don't put an image in, I'm sorry. But I'm going to try to get through this quickly and edit this pretty quickly as well. And I've got some notes on my phone here. But yeah, as I said, this is a mid-year book freakout tag. I love doing this tag every year. And I love watching this tag every year. It's just a great way to check in on how reading has been going for the first half of the year. So these are uh, all of the books that I'm going to mention here are books that I read from January to the end of June. So yeah. Let's just dive right in. So the first question is, the best book you've read so far? All of the fiction books that I was considering as a response for this, I'll have mentioned in other questions. So I'm going to go with the nonfiction and say Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kemmer. Um, Robin Wall Kemmer is an indigenous scholar and has, uh, you know, that perspective from growing up, but she also has a PhD and is kind of trained in Western science um, in botany and just has a lot of really interesting insights and perspective and I, I really love that one. Um, so would highly recommend everyone read it. The next question is the best sequel you've read so far this year. I've read surprisingly few sequels, but A Fire Endless by Rebecca Ross was one that I really enjoyed. I also enjoyed The Bone Shard Emperor by Andrea Stewart. Uh, the next question is a new release that you haven't read yet but want to. I haven't read the new Ruth Ware book, uh, Zero Days, that came out in June, so I'm hopefully I can get to that before too long. The next question is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. And I have a whole video for anticipated releases for the next half of the year, so I'll be sure to link that. Um, I think some of the ones I'm most excited about are The Ashfire King by Chelsea Abdullah, which is the follow-up to The Stardust Thief. Um, I'm super excited for Bone Shops and Bone Dust, or Bookshops and Bone Dust, excuse me, by Travis Baldry, which is set in the same world as Legends and Lattes. And then I'm also super excited for A Curse for True Love, which is the third book in the uh, Once Upon a Broken Heart series by Stephanie Garber. Very excited for all of those, but I'll link the video down below, as I mentioned, if you would like to, to hear more that I'm excited about. The next question, the fifth question, is the biggest disappointment, and unfortunately that one was Husband Material, the follow-up to Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. I adored Boyfriend Material, so I was hoping to really enjoy the sequel, and I, it was fun to be back with the characters, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just, the plot was not what I wanted it to be, and so yeah, I just didn't enjoy my, my time as much as I did with this one. And again, it's not that I hated it or didn't enjoy it at all, just my expectations were so high that if there's any anything lower than what you're expecting, there can be some disappointment there. So the next question is biggest surprise. I'm genuinely not sure what to put here. I feel like I feel like a lot of what I've read has I edited I feel like I've had pretty accurate expectations overall for for what I've read so there hasn't really been something that's been a tremendous surprise um, I, I don't know yeah I, I expect to read or expect to enjoy a lot of what I read and I have so it's been a great reading year so far um, maybe I could throw in um, the Dictionary of Lost Words, just because I wasn't quite sure what to expect. This is, I hadn't heard much about this one, but I expected to enjoy it from the synopsis and some of the tropes that I thought were used, and I really did enjoy it, so it wasn't too much of a surprise. Anyway, next question. Uh, favorite new author, either debut or new to you? So I did just mention The Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams. I absolutely adore that one. And uh, I also really enjoyed Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. I also really enjoyed The Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics by Olivia Waite. And 
I'm very excited to read more from that author. Um, I also really enjoyed um, the Drowning Emperor, the Drowning Empire series. I've read the first two of those by Andrea Stewart. I really enjoyed those. Um, I really enjoyed the writing of the Foxglove King, and so I'm hoping to read more of Hannah Witten's backlist. And I also really enjoyed, let's see, Mirage by Samaya Dowd. I adored this one. So this one is definitely an author to watch. For me, I want to continue on with that series. I also was very impressed with the writing in uh, Skin of the Sea by Natasha Bowen. So it was super hard to narrow down, so I'm just listing a million things for, for that one. Newest fictional crush. Let me grab it one sec. It's a little bit out of reach. Um, but that is Jacob from Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. He was a sweetheart. He was a complete sweetheart. Um, so absolutely loved him. Um, newest favorite characters. Let me get this pile a bit closer to me. So Tress from Trust of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson was definitely a huge standout in terms of character. Um, the In the Lives of Puppets, I enjoyed all this one, all the characters in here. This is by TJ Klune. I really enjoyed um, Esme from the Dictionary of Lost Words. She was a fantastic character and I definitely enjoyed the the main character, Anna Maria, but also all the sisters and just the sister dynamics that were going on in Anna Maria and the Fox. Um, and this is by Liana De La Rosa. And of course, one of my favorites from the year, Amina, from Amina Al Sarafi. Such a great character. Shit by Shannon Chakraborty. Um, make sure I didn't. Oh, Finley Donovan was also a delightful character just for the chaos. Um, from Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Casimano absolutely loved her. Just, again, for the pure chaos. Um, the books that made you cry is the next one, and there wasn't, there wasn't a book that full-on made me cry this year, but um, the Dictionary of Lost Words definitely had me pretty emotional, as did the In the Lives of Puppets. That one had me pretty emotional. Um, and then Yours Truly also really pulled at my heartstrings quite quite a bit. So those are the closest I think that I came this year. Um, books that made you happy. This is going to be just a long list of them. I really truly tried to narrow this down and could not. Like My whole vibe this year is just books that make me happy. So um, there were a bunch. So Spice Road. Uh, by Maya Ibrahim made me so happy. Heartstopper, the definition of making me happy right here. Um, I adored, adored, and it was so good to be back in the world of Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller. It made me so happy. Um, the Charm Offensive was another romance that made me super happy. Lost in a Book by Jennifer Donnelly. I was so happy the entire time I was reading this one. That one made me so happy. Um, how can I not mention Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, right? Like, all of these books are so different, and I'm like, but they all made me so happy. This one made me so happy. This is by Heather Fawcett. Absolutely adored this one. It was so cozy, and I just enjoyed every second of reading it. And also, um, these Twisted Bonds, this is the artwork on the outside of the Fairy Loot Edition, but this is These Twisted Bonds by Lexi Ryan. Also had such a fun time with that one. Um, Dictionary of Lost Words also made me happy. It also made me sad, but it also made me really happy. Um, Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell also made me really happy. I think... I think those are, oh, In Deeper Waters, also by F.T. Lukens, made me really happy. Fourth Wing was super fun um, and just, just entertaining for me. I, I think that's, anyway, that's a lot, but my whole vibe this year has been books that'll make me happy, so there are a lot of them. The most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received. So uh, I'll give a shout out to a few, the Leatherbound Editions of the Brandon Sanderson special projects have all been absolutely stunning. I also really adored 
a Fairy Loots version of Emily Wilde. So the, the cover, gorgeous. You know, the stenciled edges, the artwork on the front and back. And then I also really enjoyed that it looks like this is the cover of her notebook. So fun. So fun. Um, it's downstairs, but their Fairy Loots edition of The Stolen Era is also really gorgeous. I forgot to grab it, but that one was absolutely stunning. Now that I'm downstairs, let me show you the edition of The Stolen Era that I was referring to. So this cover with the gold edges and that art on both sides. So stunning, so stunning. Anyway. <laughs> the final question is, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? I'll link the video down below uh, that I made earlier this year that is my high priority reads and projects. I'm actually going to have a separate video where I just check in on my progress on those. So I'll just count that as my answer. And we'll go with that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I, I kind of zoomed right through, but hopefully that was hopefully that was of interest. And let me know your answers to any of these questions. I absolutely love doing this tag. So if you've done this tag, please link the video down below or let me know your your answers to any of the questions for what you've read so far this year or just tell me how your reading year is going. I always love to know. Um, as I said, subscribe for more bookish content and I will link everything that I referenced down below and I will also include my Instagram as well as more information about how you can support the Black Lives Matter movement and I will see you in the next one. Bye everyone.